<laughs> I've been waiting for this day for years. Um, I thought maybe it would never come. I've had so many setbacks, but I'm so excited to finally be here with you on what is a truly momentous day to share something that I think really is unbelievable. The latest art material that we've liberated, something so powerful that we've been working on for so long. But before I, um, before I show you that, I want to tell you a little story. Um, you see, in an artist's lifetime, if you get to make one truly great thing and share it with other artists, it's an unbelievable moment. If you manage to make two, it's weird and quite extraordinary. But tonight, I'm going to share with you the third thing that we've made, something that most of the labs and the geeks told us was completely and utterly impossible. But before I delve into that, I want to tell you a little bit about something that's inspired us for a long time. You see, it goes like this. When you think about paint, you have um, ordinary paints. Ordinary paints, the sort of thing you use every day. You have uh, extra ordinary paints. Then you have uh, materials that are available, easily available. And then you have materials that are unavailable. Me and the guys, we think about this all day long. We're obsessed with this. So this axis here is where we like to play. Your ordinary paints are kind of the things that you normally get in the art shops, you know, maybe your Windsor & Newton, um, your Windsor & Newton, your Liquitex, maybe even things that you're used to buying from uh, Poundland or uh, Hobbycraft. They're ordinary paints, they're available. Over here, over here, you've got your extraordinary paints that are extremely unavailable. You've got things like Vanta Black, easy, um, Eves Klein, it's blue, and historic pigments and colours, things like uh, lapis lazuli or gold leaf, things that were kind of expensive. And lately, we've heard of a new white paint by Purdue University. This stuff, you and me don't get to play with. It's unavailable, it's expensive, it's difficult to use. But up here, up here's the really interesting place because here is the bit where things are available to everybody, to the masses, and uh, they're extraordinary materials. They're for people like you and me. And weirdly, artists live here, we live here. But for a long time, we've been completely overlooked. We don't get to play with this stuff. Or if we do, we get it decades and decades later. This stuff was invented in the 50s and it hasn't really changed. So up here, you've got the first material that we liberated, the pinkest pink. Now the pinkest pink is an amazing paint. It didn't just give artists the ability to paint with a pinker pink, it actually changed the entire way that we think about artists and their rights to access colours. That was the first colour we liberated. The second colour that we liberated was, of course, Black 3.0, the blackest black. And that paint didn't just mean the guys in my studio had something cool to play with that we could do more. Actually, it meant that artists all around the world had a much more potent material. Now, this has been in a crazy year for all of us. We've worked so hard. The, all the guys in the studio, I mean, Jeff and Rachel and, and, and everybody, you know, Ellen and Elise, Badger. And uh, we've managed to liberate a few really powerful and very, very exciting things. 
uh, Easy Klein, an amazing Klein blue. We've made the blackest black ink, but there was one material, the holy grail of paints, the thing that we've been striving for for ages, and that, of course, is the whitest, brightest white. And we worked really hard. We sent it out to like 2,000 beta testers around the world. And with your help and support, we made an amazing paint. It was good. It was all right. It was pretty good. I'd say, you know, it was like a 7 out of 10. And artists already had a 5 out of 10, so it was an improvement. Then last year, disaster struck. We thought we'd failed because we heard Purdue University had invented the brightest white paint. And in paint... Fair play to them. I mean, they dedicated their lives to it. They're brilliant, brilliant scientists. You can paint roofs with the stuff and it reflected sunlight right back into the sky. An amazing innovation. How are we going to beat that in our studio? Should we even try? But we didn't give up. And as I said before, the guys came in, they burnt the midnight oil, they tried their best to make it work. You know, they could have worked for another paint factory, another art studio, they'd probably get more money. But they realised giving you materials like this is something that really matters, which is what they did. So everything went wrong. Purdue University made the paint, and our formula was a seven out of 10, and I thought I'd have to come here and say, you know what, hands up, I'm really sorry. But something miraculous happened. Our pigment supplier literally exploded, the factory. Our resin supply got stuck in the Suez Canal. So we had to think differently. What we ended up with was a new grade of nano white pigment and a wholly new resin, which means today, when I show you what I'm about to show you, I'm not just showing you a new paint, I'm showing you an entirely different paint, which opens things up for us to express ourselves in ways that have never, ever been possible. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a demo, run through how this thing works. But before I do, I just wanna tell you one thing. I opened the paint when it came back from the lab. I put my brush in it and I painted it. And I screamed because I've never used a paint that looks and feels this good. But how I feel about it and how it works for me doesn't mean anything. So we sent it off to the scientists in the lab that did a lot of research and data. And I asked them to compile some graphs and charts for me. And my jaw hit the floor. In fact, I'm still dragging it around. It's so unbelievable. White 2.0 reflects more than 50% of light. It is 50% brighter than your average paint that you're using now. And that's a really big number. In art, we talk about something that reflects 1%, half a percent, 2%. So when I'm talking about 56% in the visual spectrum, that's literally mind blowing. So let me take you through what we've actually made. Um, Shang, can you get in a little bit closer so I can show them kind of what's going on? Cheers, mate. Right, so first of all, I'm going to show you this. This is a really interesting thing. I don't know if you guys have seen this before, but it's one of the geeky little things we use in the lab to measure color. This is a spectral long tile. This reflects more white light in loads of different directions than anything else. We use it to cal calibrate the things that we measure things with. So that's our barometer. This here is, is white 2.0, and uh, this is the first look at it. I mean, this is it. We've, we've made it. It is here. This really exists. This is white 2.0, the brightest white ever created. And we've created this way ahead of any other industry. It's phenomenal. So let's take a look. Give it a shake. It works just like a normal paint. There's so many features in here that oh, I get so excited. It even smells good. You voted for the scent, and uh, I'm so glad you went for this one. Out of the four we sent, this is literally my favorite. It's a beautiful paint to use. So let me show you. Let's actually paint it. First of all, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but it is dazzlingly bright. I get so excited every time I use it. Here you go. Now, some interesting things. This is black paper. White paint should not be this opaque with one coat on black paper, but it is. This is a one coat, one touch application that goes on even the darkest surfaces. It's reflecting light at all wavelengths in all directions. It is super, super, super opaque. 
It's beautiful to use. And as I say, a one coat application. Even on white paper, it's kind of weird because uh, it's brighter than even the paper. And uh, it's just crazy. I don't know if you can see it at home, um, but it really is kicking back. I mean, it's, it's dazzling. So a couple of other things I wanted to show you. You know, this is it in comparison with other paints. We benchmarked it against hundreds, believe me. Uh, Windsor & Newton, White 2.0, Liquitex, Golden, Peebo, and Turner. And these are some of the best paints that you can get. But here you can see, with just one coat, White 2 is doing everything you want it to do from a paint. It is absolutely lovely. A couple of tests I really like to do. And a lot of you ask, what does it do in the UV? And of course, we've heard about people painting the roofs of their buildings to bounce back sunlight. This is a UV torch. And you'll see, that's Windsor & Newton. Kicks back a bit of UV. But the minute you put it on white too, you can see just how powerful those optical brighteners we've put in there and what that pigment mix is doing. And I, I don't know if it comes across on the, on the screen, but when you try this, um, you'll know for yourself. I had to show you the ball test. We always do a ball test. So white too and your standard best-selling uh, white paint. And the results are astonishing. You can literally see it. Um, with your naked eyes. So that's essentially what I need to show you. The big news is right now, artists from all around the world can access White 2.0. We've made it and it's ready. It's 19.99 and it's available right now from culturehustle.com. And as always, I can't wait to see what you make with this stuff. I'm so pleased we got there. Uh, if you've got any questions, I'd be so happy to take them. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Okay. Um, is the lucky accident? Yeah. Is the lucky accident the thing with the lucky accident that allows you to make uh, white two? Mm. Does that give you some more information about how you make, might make other paints? Does it? Yeah. Sort of, uh, does it sort of change the way you think about making paints? Yeah. So. Um, the question is, did the happy accident help us think and learn other things about how to make paints for the future? Absolutely, because the thing is, when you're making these game-changing materials, you're always absolutely breaking the rules. You're doing things that you're not allowed to do. When we made Black 3, all the labs, they told us you can't make paint like this. And certainly, if we'd have approached making White 2 the way we thought, we'd have never got there. So it happened by mistake. But you're right, it's opened up a whole new type of paint technology. Super opaque, instant reco, beautiful acrylics like we've never had. So I think it's opened up a whole new chapter for paint. Um, just going to see if we've got any questions from those watching at home. Okay. Izzy Paints 66. Is it really that white? I can't really be 50% brighter than a regular white paint, can it? Um, yeah, it really is. I couldn't believe it either, but it really, really is. Um, it's extraordinarily white. India is an artist. Why has the development of white too been so important to you? And why do you think it will change the game for artists out there? <sighs> That's a big question, India. Um, it's important to me for loads of reasons because I think white paint is the fundamental paint in all our sort of toolboxes. It's the building block of most of our work. There's also a huge race on for it and a lot of big corporates and labs are trying to get into that space and uh, sort of privatise it before anybody else. I knew it was possible. I wanted to share it. But more than that, I know it will really help artists express themselves in new ways. And it's something that um, I'm pleased we pulled off because, as I say, we worked so hard for so many years to get there. So it means an awful lot to me and the whole team in the studio as well. It's a real sort of like uh, achievement for us, I think. Uh, okay. Sonia Ludwig. Um, first the blackest black, now the brightest white. What's next? Um, I think, in all honesty, what's next might be a good rest for me and the team. Um, and then we're looking at other colours, uh, and I don't want to say too much about it, but there's some really, really exciting things uh, bubbling in the lab at the moment, but I don't, I don't want to talk about it today. It's all about the white. Um, Harry Fine, do you have scientific evidence for how bright the white is? Well, 
Uh, obviously, we have actual scientists that work in the studio, um, Badger and Jemima and Rachel, and they've run tests, and that's the data I'm able to share at the moment. But we've also sent the paint off to the National Physical Laboratory, and we'll have the results back in the next few days, and we, we uh, are looking forward to sharing that with everybody, actually, because they're measuring more than what we can measure in my small studio, so we should have even more exciting news soon. Um, Thomas Baxter, what happens if we mix the pinkest pink with the brightest white? Um, I imagine you'll get very, 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 very bright pink. Uh, it might hurt your eyes, I don't know. We'll have to try it. Simon, how did you develop the world's brightest white paint? It's a big question. Um, well, we did our best at making a really bright paint a few years ago, and we made three or four different versions. We sent them to artists all around the world to try in their work. And um, we did a massive survey and it came back and we honed it and tested it and changed it. And it was more like making a cake than anything else, but it's very geeky. Um, Science-wise, it's the right binders, pigments, brightness. And uh, we just kept tweaking it. And like I say, we can't take any glory for it. There was a weird accident that happened and we ended up with a pigment we'd never even considered. Um, last question from Ben. Denon, why is empowering artists with amazing materials so important to you? It's everything to me because we're at a time where artists are really um, not doing so well. They're the most innovative, creative people in our society. They push things forward, but we have educators trying to um, cancel their courses, nobody really investing in the arts. And I think it's really important that art materials at least stand up for artists' voices and give them a way to make really cool stuff and show them that we believe in them. I also think it's really important that artists are in the mix. Like I said before, I don't think we should be an afterthought, especially when it comes to materials. I'd like to think that people use our materials to say really impactful things and share their vision with the world. Anyway, um, thank you so much for joining me. It's been really good to be with you all. If you've got any more questions, then feel free to put them in the chat below. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, and I really hope you enjoy White 2.0. I'll see you later. Thank you.